So, in her panic, the bard decided to use her owl's one revival spell. She has an owl that can revive someone. She used it to resurrect the old lady and hide her under a bush. <laughs> hey, what's everybody? Scooby the Roll here. Does a 17 hit? Because if it does, then you're gonna have to leave a like on the video unless you want to take some damage. <laughs> okay, that sounds a bit too threatening. Uh, but anyway, how are you guys doing? Welcome to another D&D memes. Wait, green text. Welcome to another D&D green text. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, how are you doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Before jumping into the video, I would quickly, kindly ask you to smash the like button because, you know, if uh, 17 hits and it probably does because you don't have that much AC, let's face it, you're a commoner like me. Um, yeah, you're gonna take a lot of damage, so just smash like on the video, consider me bribed doing that and uh, you don't take any damage. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Anon doesn't like Warhammer fans. Tired of ass fucks obsessed with I'm gonna assume Warhammer? <laughs> I'm so tired of this. I joined the Star Wars 5th edition game and I should have known from the beginning that this would be a show. Pimi, looking for some Star Wars 5th edition games since I DM it a lot and I want to try being a player. Find the game a few hours after starting searching. Holy shit, I'm lucky that PNG. The DM introduces me to his players and they all seem friendly. While we are making our characters, I noticed that one of the players got a space marine avatar. <laughs> no, not again that PNG. The guy turns out to be a rules lawyer on top of that. During the game, the now identified that guy can't stop making comments on how his character is taller and stronger than everybody else. He argues with the DM that his blaster is actually a bolter and that the bullets also explode on impact. Our group discovers that they must go on the other side of the planet. Sure, we will use a ship. I'm a pilot. No need for a ship. We shall use a drop pod. A w what? He explained that the use of a drop pod is critical for the success of our mission and yet keeps telling our characters that they are too weak to survive the fall of the drop pod. We lose way too much time on that, but that guy wants his space marine stuff done in Star Wars because f the force, I guess. We're going full warp into that shit. We managed to take a ship anyway, and the DM is doing a marvelous job at distracting the re- <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. We go where we need to go and do the mission. Next session, some players are unavailable, so the DM asks us if we want to play some classic D&D 5th edition. The guy pulls out a f Nargle warrior out of nowhere with some homebrew sh that he found on Reddit. The setting of the DM is not even linked whatsoever with Warhammer. The session goes by and can't pass a turn without hearing For Grandfather Nargle! The session ends. My face when, even as a big Warhammer fan myself, I'm getting tired of this kind of guy. Worst, I feel like those guys are making me hate Warhammer, even though I love it. I just don't wanna be associated with those <laughs> you know? I just, I just have a question. Isn't there like a, you know, Warhammer tabletop game? <laughs> Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> you know, isn't isn't that an option to play if you really want, like if you like Warhammer so much, maybe play that one? <laughs> I don't know, just just a thought, I guess. You can always find a compromise. Be me, level 3 halfling battlemaster. Be not me, new DM. After a few encounters, the DM texts me that my character is too strong and it's hard to make fun encounters that I wouldn't stomp on. I start thinking that I probably did went a little bit too hard on power gaming. A few sessions before that, everybody was memeing about halfling tribes riding on mountain goats due to the homebrew setting and the lore. Idea the JPEG. Since we haven't played at level 3 for long, I suggest DM to change my subclass into cavalier in exchange of getting a goat. The DM agrees. My face when, I get to charge into battle as a halfling riding a goat without needing to retire my character while giving the DM more opportunities to make more fun encounters. <laughs> Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Player wants to play a character inspired by Dante. Okay, switching between greatsword and hand crossbows depending on the situation? Not the strongest concept, but a neat one. I'll allow it. Player spouts nothing but wed and tear dialogue the entire campaign. Never mind, I should have seen this coming. Well, no sh they told you that from the jump. <laughs> Grog use rock. Be me, the DM. Be not me. A PC named Grog. 
Grog is an orc wizard of scribes and armorer artificer multiclass. His tribe is quite civilized and has long abandoned the old cruel ways and embraced culture and arcane knowledge. However, they are sure that if hundreds of generations before them used stones and sticks, then they should also do so. So, Grog is a geomancer. My face when the school of scribes allows you to cast almost every spell except cantrips and 8th level with a bludgeoning damage. Everything Grog casts or does somehow involves rocks. All his spells are rocks. His magic armor is made of rocks. He has the bag of holding with 500 pounds of rocks inside and he has a <gasps> pet rock that the druid should take care of if he doesn't want to feel its fury. So far, he has used the following spells. Three little rocks that automatically hit you in the face. Or sorry, in a face, I guess. <laughs> Somehow that makes it even funnier. <laughs> like you cast that and then there's a dice and based on that the rocks go into someone's face. You know, you can't choose which face they go into. <laughs> Stream of pebbles that shoots from his outstretched fingertips. A medium rock that hits you in the liver and makes you poisoned until the end of your next turn. A club made of rock that grows from his arm and stays for a minute and works better in the darkness for some reason. A big f boulder that crushes everybody in a 20 feet radius. A kind of teleportation that when he falls into the ground erupts damaging everyone around. A round rock that flies so fast it goes right through everyone in a 100 feet line. A rune that creates a rock over your head if you touch it. Also, the party currently doesn't know about his bag of holding. I expect them to find out about it in the most stupid way possible. I'm just gonna say that I like Grog. <laughs> That is a really cool concept, and also the DM is very nice for allowing it. <laughs> I killed grandma. <laughs> so, my players decided to raid this nobleman's house. The party's bard decided to try to choke out this old servant lady and killed her on the spot. Of course, I had to make her feel bad about it, so a picture of her granddaughter fell out of her pocket. So, in her panic, the bard decided to use her owl's one revival spell. She has an owl that can revive someone. She used it to resurrect the old lady and hide her under a bush. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, this is so dumb. Paladins sure are... something. I didn't even power build this character, just shield master and build around protecting others. Not even optimized for damage. Bimi, level 7 paladin. The rest of the party is a level 7 warlock fighter and a level 7 rogue, playing through tyranny of dragons fighting through a flying castle, attacking a vampire. The vampire crits me despite having this advantage and reduces my maximum health to about half. I attack with magic sword and use a second level spell slot dealing 1d8 plus 6 slashing plus 2d6 necrotic and 4d8 radiant damage. Bonus action, shove down to the ground with shield. Attack again using my multi-attack feature. Attacks with advantage and rolls a 14 and a natural 20. Paladins. Crits go brr. <laughs> Crits go brr. Me. This is the moment I've been waiting for. The damage for this one attack is 2d8 plus 6 slashing plus 4d6 necrotic plus 6d8 radiant damage. My face when the vampire is vulnerable to radiant and takes double damage. Rolls high and gets 18 slashing, 12 necrotic, and a total of 50 plus damage from one attack. My face when the boss immediately dies. Anyways, paladins are fun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. I'm gonna be honest, I would have fun with a crit like that as well. <laughs> I wonder who wouldn't. I hate when this happens. Bimi, scouting looking for group discord servers to find a game to join. Proceed to find one that gets me excited and hyped. The DM is really nice and holds up a one-on-one -on -one session zero. I get selected as one of the players and join the private server. All the players are clicking nicely and it looks like we're going to be a great party. Puts around 4 hours creating and balancing my character, making sure to follow all the homebrew guidelines that the DM gave me. The group gets together to discuss time and when we're going to play. They choose a time that for me is 3am. 
I'm forced to leave so the others can play. Little note to myself, never join groups that still need to decide the time ever again. Oh god, Jesus, that is... <laughs> oh man. That, that is like painful, that actually hurts. <laughs> like having to cancel everything and just leave the campaign just because scheduling, that's, that's such a b <gasps> The time our DM had to rewrite history. Discord campaign. Bimi, Tiefling Grave Cleric Monk. Binatmi, Warforged Fighter, Gnome Druid, Shapeshifter Sorcerer, Tiefling Bard, and the Hallowed One Rogue. The party's level is 7. Due to chaotic nature, the DM gives me a feat to make something chaotic happen 3 times a day based on a D100. Such things as raining strawberries, giant cave spider in a pet shop, and the bard meeting a deity have occurred. We're currently in a mining town getting supplies when I roll my last chaos for the day. My face when I roll a 100. The DM turns on face cam to show the look of utter dumbfoundedness. Time stops. The entire town and NPC companions are frozen around us. Go outside and see a little kid with a clipboard and overalls writing notes. Shouts, you're not supposed to be here, and pulls a button out of his pocket and hits it. The DM has us roll to see if we notice anything. Thanks to ungodly wisdom score, I notice everything. Every player character and their history has changed. The druid's family and town were never burned down. The rogue is now part of the Queen's Guard. The bard wasn't stripped of his emissary and diplomat status, and the warforged wasn't a military deserter. He's now a political asylum seeker. My grave cleric monk is now a high clergyman in the church in the main city. Everything we f***ed up so far was changed to where we now did amazing. Armistice was never signed, so our adventuring group is now a special task force to help sabotage the rival city. A letter was taped to the Warforged. Because we caused a time variance, we now owe Kronos a favor. My face when fate is used child labor in this world. Come on, man. There could not be an entire story without something just to at least one <gasps> up line, you know? If not the whole story, at least one line. Our DM rewrote the entire lore of a 9 month campaign on the fly thanks to a dice roll. He didn't get pissed, he actually was having a ton of fun going around the proverbial table explaining what happened. Hands down, the best DM that I've ever had. Thanks Enigma. I mean, yeah, but I'm not gonna lie, that would be kinda disappointing as well in a way. I'm, I'm not sure, I guess it depends, I'm not sure exactly how I would feel if it would happen to me, but like, you know, everything that you did in the last 9 months in the campaign suddenly changing? That's at least going to make you think about it a bit, right? Like, there's no way you just go into that and you're excited that it happened instantly. <laughs> I <laughs> Is there? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Would you want that to happen in your campaign? Or, like, how would you feel about that? Anyway, on that note, that's gonna be it for this video. So, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to the supporting channel on Patreon. I really appreciate it. So, thank you so much for the support given there. Links below if you want to check that out, as well as links to the social media, Discord, subreddit, and everything else. And, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.